Hello, my great and wonderful people. We welcome you once again to our today's episode of this program. And today we get this message for our Tibu Unubisi one quickly review to Una concerning the things when we say it they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. This one of the messages when we say we receive from Peter Obi when he be the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. Ever since a lot of people they complain, say Peter Obi not they respond to people, right? Now Peter Obi don't finally talk. <laughs> you know, say person when we say you know they talk always. If he talk once, definitely that he will will cause a lot of wave. And this very message, the message will be said Peter will be sent across to describe this Azu Buhari and his own administration. And the title of this one talks in Nigeria, now bad news on that Buhari administration, which is APC administration. This one of the message will be said Peter will be when be the presidential candidate of Labour Party sent across even as we talk right now. All right. We will go ahead now to do one or two things from inside this very one before we continue to the review some other videos to you even for the process of this program. And before we go ahead, we want to beg you for one favor. I beg help us to like this video because now the only way when we say YouTube will fit in help us publish this video to every of our subscribers and also Facebook. Now their policy, the more video get likes, the more that they publish them. Thank you for your understanding. All right, maybe we'll do one or two reading from inside this very one. And as we put our hand there for inside this matter, the comic us understand, say, Peter Obi, when he be the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, don't come outside to slam President Mohammed Buhari's APC administration. Say, the way when he be said, they make a joke out of Nigeria, not be something when he be said anybody really like. And stay on top of the matter. The comic understands in Nigeria today, now bad news. This one of the world, when you see the former Anabra state governor, when you see Inim na Pita Obi, declared. And as we put our hand deep again, the counter say, according to Mr. Peter Obi, it does say Mr. Buhari's rule, it don't ensure say poverty don't become the order of the day for inside this country. As he also go ahead to express fear, say, there will be a lot of problem to clear for the next president when the BC it will come after this very administration. Our country today, Nigeria, now bad news. And as we talk now, Nigeria as a country don't get the highest number of poor people, the higher number of out of school children as well, and also the highest rate of unemployment for inside this country. Mr. Obi also go ahead to stress on Monday for the private sector economic forum when it be organized by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and also Industry. For the recent United Nations Children's Fund, when it be that they call UNICEF, they, they also bring out reports when it be said that they review say the number of out of school children for inside this country today don't hit 20 million people. The Labour Party presidential candidate also add the government when they say it will come for 2023 after this very administration of this Azim Buhari and APC, it will face a lot of challenges for both domestic and also external issues. And still on top of the matter, the contour say Mr. Buhari when he be the president of this country. For the time when he say it take pay visit to Imo State, he also cry come answer. Say he own regime's achievement. Say the people when they say they're supposed to they publish everything when they say they don't do when it's good. They're not they do one according to the way when they say that they assign them to do one. And for the side of time and resources, this very administration they don't do a lot of things when they say it really did good because those people when they say they're supposed to they publish all these things, they're not they carry them out so that people will feel seen and also appreciate them. All right, my great and wonderful people, now only this one will take from this very news, we'll be seeing what they receive right now, when it consigned the message, when the presidential candidate of Labour Party, when he named now Peter Obite Komasa, to review his own mind concerning this very present administration, led by this assumed Buhari. 
And before we leave, we now make una share una our opinion with us on the comment section, just as we always talk. We we'll like to talk, say, a lot of people don't complain tired, say, Peter Obi, not the talk back to this very administration. Maybe because of, say, the fear, or because of, say, many people not get anything bad to talk or sign up. I don't believe, say, that one at the issue. Now, it don't come as I to speak in own mind. I believe, say, all of us now, when it be, say, they complain, say, Peter Obi, not the talk, not the talk. I believe say, all of us dissatisfied now, right? Okay, we don't get more to talk. I believe say, this man don't explain everything when ABC is declared for each and every one of us to understand. Now, we'll leave you to watch this next video before we we'll get any other thing when ABC we need to talk again. Oh, yeah, watch. We'll come back for the conclusion. Earlier this week, the Independent National Electoral Commission found itself in the eye of another storm when a political interest group accused it of manipulating the electoral register to boost the chances of the political party in power in next year's general election. Well, to have a conversation around that and the polity in general, we are now being joined by Professor Patu Tomi, a professor of political economy and management expert, and Emmanuel Mock, a good governance advocate. Good morning, Prof, and good morning, Mr. Mock. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to you. Good, morning, everyone. Good, to, good to have you join us. Yeah. Let, let's start yeah. this way. I mean, and this question will be for, for the two of you. Are you worried uh, that um, uh, INEC might not be up to it? I'm asking because of what the CUPP, you know, said, you know, elaborately last week in terms of uh, the issues around uh, voter registration and the number of uh, people that were discovered to either be fake or, you know, the allegations are there. But then we also know that uh, INEC has responded, as a matter of fact, Professor Yakub Mahmoud, yesterday with the Nigerian Guild of Editors, you know, did speak eloquently about the fact that not only uh, will next year's elections be free and fair and credible, but that for the first time, it will be verifiable. What are your thoughts? Are you satisfied with what, uh, uh, with the defense that INEC has put forward? Or you're worried that it looks like the process might be hijacked? It's not a matter of being satisfied or not being satisfied. It's a matter of us all working together to ensure that that happens. Mm. If you look away, something can happen. You blink, something can go wrong. So it's calling on all citizens, INEC, everybody, to keep their eyes on the ball. Look, we've had a tradition of political parties and politics as based on who can most outplay the other in your salary. Mm. So we should not take it for granted that they are scheming all kinds of things. So vigilance, you know, uh, is the only thing that can save us all. INEC needs to be extraordinarily vigilant. The citizens need to be vigilant. They need to scream anytime they suspect anything is going wrong. And everybody can be kept within those boundaries that will enable us have that free a fair election that we would like to see. All right. I mean, let's take a look at what has just happened. Of course, INEC has come out to respond to this. But faulting the CUPP for disseminating its findings prior to confirming or clarifying with the commission itself, the clarification we have from INEC is that they are still, in fact, cleaning up the system. What do we make of this clarification? And also, is the CUPP wrong, wrong in any way to have disseminated its findings before clarifying with INEC? I do not think... Uh, the CUPP is wrong at all. Uh, there are too many reasons why we should be wary of what INEC is doing. I, for one, have engaged INEC on several fronts. I had several meetings with reading formally to INEC. There are several things that are wrong. I have had several people reach out to me that they've not been able to collect their voter cards. We've reached out to INEC about it. INEC says the voter cards are at the uh, different registration centers or local governments. But people have made so much effort and they are tired of going there to collect it that they've not seen their cards. Now, INEC, take the last time or with this matter of voter registration going on. So many people have not been able to register. In fact, I led a citizen's organized effort to help people get registered, had meetings with INEC at their office. And INEC said, uh, in Lagos here, uh, their senior staff said, I met the rec, 
that um, every effort has been made so that people get registered. The thing there is this. You say you are giving out machines to register, but how many machines are you giving out? At the places where people are supposed to register, you have lines of maybe 300 people and you have four machines, which makes it impossible for the people to register. I can tell you of so much effort made by us to help get this done. All I could tell we are doing the best we can. But it's clear you're not doing the best you can, yet you say you're doing the best you can. And so when INEC comes and says 2023 general elections are going to be free, credible, and verifiable, it's just like what INEC has always said. They say it's done, but nothing is done. That's, I'm not talking now from supposition, I'm talking factually. Engaging them, engaging the system, trying to see that people get registered, people collect. In fact, we reached out to some, some lawyers said that we might have to coalesce people together, people who have registered so long, their names and all of this, and engage and to say, where are the cards of these people? Because you say the cards are there for them to collect. You say every day that people don't want to collect their cards. People go to collect, they don't see their cards. These are facts. So when I come and say, especially with what see people just published, these are very damning. And I'm telling, as far as I'm concerned, INEC itself should not be the one trying to exonerate itself. Because these are things that are clearly damning. And one of the things the so CUP what is doing is to uh, give out a clarification. Good. And to say that until they are done sorting and cleaning the system. If somebody you is accused of having committed a crime, that person's defense is just his defense. An independent person should check what that person has done. The CU people press conference brought out a fundamental fact. The Beavers machines by which names can be uploaded. Yes have codes. Yes. For those codes, for those names to have been uploaded as accused of INEC, those codes were given out. Now, for it to happen, there has to be official meddlesomeness in what's going on. And so for the same person that has been accused of having been a part of this, to be the one trying to come out and say, no, nothing happened, it's, it's very suspect to me, especially considering the demographics of the country and things happening in all that different areas of the Will, will, will it be right to say that uh, part of the reasons why you are bringing this out now uh, will be because maybe you have a leaning uh, as prof does, you know, towards a, a certain political party who is more interested in new voters and new registrations. Well, and why therefore. would you ask such a question? Why would you ask such a question? Okay, the, no, the no, people, you should people, not people ask people such a question. You should not ask such a why question. Not? Elections are coming. Yes. Every, in fact, it's a legal fundamental right yeah. for citizens to register to vote. Absolutely. So nobody, there is absolutely no that. reason for it. There is absolutely nothing, no reason for such a question. INEC is supposed to register all eligible voters. But that's what fact. they're doing. No, no, that's I, not. I'm, I'm coming. Not no, no, a case for no, 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 no. You shouldn't ask such a question. Really, Why not? Because it suggests that then it's. It, I mean, it suggests as if there is ulterior motive in trying to see that citizens register and vote. If you check for me, especially for me, I was a former national secretary of IP. Back. Yeah. Okay. I was a former national chairman. I in, was involved with INEC years upon, on at least for three, four years. Prof here is aware. Mm -hmm. And we engaged INEC on the process of registering people, doing things properly. Even at this particular time, we engaged INEC that there are too many people who have come of age to register. Even in my own house. Yeah. Do you understand? Some of them could not register because while they waited and waited in line days upon days, they still could not get registered. And these are people that have passed the age of registration. Yeah. We said to INEC, we said to the REC at least at the meeting we had, the best way to do this is two months, two months, across every polling unit, as was done in 2000 and, I mean, in 2019 especially, where people registered at their polling units in front of their houses, even if it's just one month, 30 days, that people are allowed to but register at their polling ask, units. Why is it that way, for people, people to register the day they turn 18? Just standard. It's done everywhere in the world. That's what why do we question. have to that's have this I window? Yeah. For we we all made, agree that that's what they continue the process. And, and, and so, right. so. Yeah, but, but then you also have to um, factor what you know, INEC has explained to say what? that you know, we give a period for people to come and register, and that people only rushed out in why the last one in week. Period, it's why not shouldn't right. we have a system it's not where right. you can register any day you wake up and want to? That's how it's done all over the world. This is administrative incompetence. 
Mm. That is what it is simple. And if they admit that, then we can start working from the point of view that they are incompetent. And we can see who can help them get more competent. Right. I think it's quite evident that there's some loopholes here, and that's why we're having some issues here. Yeah. And of course, um, somebody, you, you did mention that you don't get to exonerate yourself. Let somebody else do that. Let's talk about the status quo around that. Who is policing INEC? And what more do we need to do to get to the point where we're not having recurring issues? Now, this is where civil society is important. Everywhere in the world, civil society groups pull the feet of institutions to the fire and ensure that they do what's right for the common good. And so we should have civil society organizations that are constantly on the neck of our neck and saying to them, you've not done this yet. They should be able to, in fact, develop uh, a basic um, you know, checklist that citizens can all have. And we can say on this checklist, on this day, INEC has not done this. Why? And there's a big public outcry and there's pressure to do this or that. And that's the way society really evolves. Uh, but we don't seem to have, I mean, civil society is doing remarkably well compared to how things have been in the past, but we still need strong civil society to be able to get our institutions to run right. But Prof, will it be wrong for uh, interested parties and political parities who feel agreed, who feel that their, cities, their members have been disenfranchised, wrong at all. To, to state their position, which Not is what all. I was trying to ask Mr. Mark, to say yeah. that, you know, if, if you have a position yes. and you feel that um, uh, your people are aligned towards a political party right. and that uh, there's a generality of some of their members that have not been registered, make that case clearly. I, 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 I responded the way I did because sincerely it's actually partisan to suggest that it's because you are from a particular area that you are advocating that INEC should do the writing and register everybody. And it creates a wrong impression in the public's eye about this matter. Okay. Now, on the 31st of July, when INEC ended voter registration, Punch newspaper did a very good, not just Punch, even uh, Daily Trust and Vanguard did very good reportage of investigations. In fact, they said at one particular polling unit, I think in Abu, I mean polling points in Abuja, the people almost slept at the point, hoping that they must get captured because INEC was going to close the next day. When they were closing, the people were f almost fighting with INEC. The same thing, you need to check punch of 31st or 1st. Yes. You would see that across the whole country, across the whole country, now this is a fundamental flaw. When I engaged the REC, he said that there's not enough money to employ people to register people at the polling unit. If it's money, tell us how many staff do you need? As at today, the official figure of polling units that INEC has put out is 170,000. Yeah. All right, my great and wonderful people. I believe say all of them are done listening to those conversations on how it be say INEC does it start again. So make sure see that towards the effort of Nigerians. Now, so they will do us sluggishly now. Before you know what they happen, election time don't come. You will see and say, Nigerians when they be say they're ready to vote. They're not will see place to vote and not be only that one. Those people when they be say they're not even they are alive. Those uh, ghosts when they be say they register. Now those ones then the one they go count for their own system. And at the end, you will see and say they will come announce person when they be say they're not even supposed to announce as the winner of the election. I believe so all of them have done the same. Before now, we don't review a lot of things. When we say don't they go on for the side of INEC. Yes, even the president or the leader of CUPP, Ugo Chinyere, also come outside the other day to review everything when we say INEC and also this present administration of APC with uh, the Supreme Court Governor of Imo State, Hope Uzodima, don't put in place the time of PVC registration. They will want to be said that they borrow name all over the world to register for this PVC in order for them to assess this new law when they be said they don't put in place concerning INEC. Now, this one don't also come outside now to review another aspect again. All right, my great and wonderful people, we need to open up our mouth to speak now before it today Let's. I will leave you now and make you share your opinion with us on the comment section. 
And before we draw the line here, we want you this media to really appreciate each and every one of you for your time, your effort. They won't basically help or they share these broadcasts, your likes, your comments, all of them. We appreciate them. I bet make not forget to help us share this very one as well. So that if you still reach our brothers and sisters all over the world, because we believe in what they say, information, not power. And as we do so, God Almighty will bless you. We'd like to draw the conclusion of this program here. We will see you again.